Brian Flores. And no matter how bad the Dolphins look, never look past that. And mm-hmm. here's why. When a coach leaves the Patriots, he's got information on everybody, every single player, every single scheme, and he freshly knows everything about the plays. Not mm-hmm. much has changed in that time frame because he was just there. And that's going to help Brian Flores a lot. But from the Patriots' standpoint, they only have certain information on Brian, and that's not very useful. Mm-hmm. You know, So he's got a major advantage there. And maybe he wants to win this so badly, maybe he was focused on this Patriots game and didn't even really game plan for the Ravens. I'm Could not be. saying he didn't, but, but mm-hmm. I'm just saying that I've seen this happen before. Eric Mangini used to do this. Last year, look at what the Lions did. You know that the Lions wanted to win this above all else, and then they just fall apart the rest of the year. And then the Titans, Mike Grabel, you know, although they did pretty good, they went 9-7, and seven, but you could see that that game mattered to them. And who's to say the Dolphins? And, and by the way, the Miami has been difficult for the Patriots for whatever reason. It's like some kind of curse or something. Yeah. So I'm just saying oh, they're going to win, but – Let's just let's pump the brakes on it, it being a blowout just because the Ravens blew them out because the circumstances have completely changed. Right. No, I, 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 I agree with you. I, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think a lot of people will say that on paper because of what we did to Pittsburgh and what happened to them against Baltimore. Um, you're going to see that. But well, you're it, could exactly be a blow, right. it could be a blowout. I, I, I'm just saying yeah. that don't expect it just because, right. just because of the Ravens game. I don't think the Ravens game says anything about this game so right. that's right. all i meant but, yeah. yeah i mean you know we still have to play the game again you know it, it we, we can say that we can sit here and talk about it and it's on paper but they still have to go in out and execute and i'm not saying that the patriots won't execute or anything like that we still got to go out and win the game so i mean i agree with you i don't expect a blowout it could happen i mean come on that, that, yeah. that just last year, they went into Detroit and got embarrassed by the Lions, okay, the Detroit Lions. That's how much of an advantage Matt Patricia had over knowing all the players on the roster. Yeah. That versus going just a, a few months later going into Kansas City and winning an AFC championship game. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. That's how much of an edge being a yeah. former coach in New England you get over everyone else. That's, it's a huge edge. That's why every time we play a former, former coach, it's always a struggle. It's always a grind. Every single time, it seems like. Yeah. So. What what is what's your thought? Not that I'm trying to switch teams here. What's your thought on on uh, Kyler Murray's first game, the Cardinals? <laughs> I I think he looked as atrocious as uh, I expected, yeah. and I know that every everybody is all like, "Oh, did you see the end? Did you see the end?" Yeah, I saw the end. What I saw was a Detroit Lions team that was destroying Kyler so badly that they gave up and they went, they mentally went into garbage time. Mm-hmm. And what I really saw overall is an indictment against the Detroit Lions. Not good, not good Cardinals or not good right. Kyler Murray, but bad Lions, pathetic Lions, and the mm-hmm. same old Lions. That's what I saw. Yeah, because now, it... uh, Kyler Murray's got what? He's playing Baltimore this week, right? Correct. They're in Baltimore against Lamar Jackson. Correct. This, this is going to be a bloodbath. This is going to be a, a massacre. Okay? It's, it's like Les Grossman in Tropic Thunder. I will massacre you, you know? Right. That, that's going to be this Sunday. It's going to be bad, really bad. Well, I mean, do you, do you expect kind of like what happened to Miami to happen again this week? Do you think Baltimore puts up a lot of points offensively and shuts them shuts – uh, shuts them down, shuts Kyler Murray down as far as defensively? Uh, Baltimore won't have the type of offensive game they did last week because Cardinals are a different defense. Okay. Uh, Miami Miami mentally checked out, first of all. Um, second of all, the, the, the Cardinals, they're a better defense uh, overall. Mm-hmm. The offense, they're going to get destroyed. You saw the first three quarters for, for Kyler. He, he, I, how many batted balls? I mean, just like I said, that would happen. How many batted balls? How many sacks? He looked completely lost and confused. And it was only until the Lions, you could see the Lions. They started going into prevent defense. They were, mm-hmm. they were in garbage mode, garbage, garbage time mentality, and look what happened. 
and and, yeah. and it's hard to turn it back on once the floodgates open. It's hard to switch it back. And right. It's shocking that a Matt Patricia type team would do that. You think you'd have better discipline, but they just look like the same old lions to me. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, was there was there any games that jumped out to you last week other than the Patriot game that kind of surprised you? As far as like score wise goes, is there anything that jumped out at you last week, week one? Well, let me take a look because I, I made some notes. I was actually going to do a do a video mm-hmm. of them. The Browns and Titans that was interesting, and it was interesting because of all the hype. Mm-hmm. The hype for the Browns has been absolutely ridiculous, almost to the point of nauseous, and. Right. I was watching just like shocked. Wow, I mean, I, I expected with all the hype at least they would they would do better than that. But three picks by Baker Mayfield that that was that was pathetic. The, the Titans made the, the Browns look like a an expansion team or something. It, it was that was that was rough, you know. And yeah. the Titans look good, man. They look good. I mean, and and Mariota, I I was kind of down on him a week ago, but. He came out, and, and maybe maybe bringing in Tannehill is what he needed. And maybe having that guy behind him and a threat behind him. Maybe that some guys react well to those things, and some guys mm-hmm. fold. But it seems like right. maybe he's got something here, and, and maybe Vrabel's got something here. So, right. But the 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 the, the Browns, the Browns are exa- right now that. They, the way they played is exactly why I didn't buy into them. And the biggest reason I didn't okay. buy into them was their head coach. Brady Kitchens is a rookie Brady head coach. Kitchens. He is not the person you want to coach all those personalities, Baker and OBJ and Landry, who's got an ego, even though he seems quiet sometimes. Trust me, he's got an ego. He was even talking after the game, uh, talking junk after the game. So to manage all those guys, then you got Kareem Hunt coming back eventually. Uh, it's just come on, man. You need a you need a seasoned veteran coach to handle something like that, and you've got this guy. No, no, they, he was my biggest question mark. So, I think that was you, the evidence of think, that. Do you think that they should have kept Greg Williams as their head coach? No, 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 no. Okay. They 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 needed to go to somebody. They needed to offer somebody some big time money. Maybe maybe they should have went harder after Bruce Arian. Yeah, true. So the um the Packers Bears game that was garbage, and it wasn't. <laughs> was I'm the... not saying it was. I'm not saying it was garbage because of the because of it was a defensive game. It wasn't like the mm. Super Bowl. The Super Bowl was just pure awesome defense. Okay, both both offenses were playing. And do, doing things, they were moving the ball, but the defenses were just suffocating both offenses. Right. It was it was a good defensive game. This Packers Bears game, it was just the reason it was a quote unquote defensive game is because both offenses sucked. They were so yeah. bad that they couldn't get anything done, and both of those quarterbacks didn't play in the preseason. And every right. every everybody is complaining. Oh, the preseason sucks. Let's shorten the preseason, and all this really. This that, that Thursday night game and this entire week one, for the most part, is why you need a four-game preseason. It's not for us, the fans. It's not for us. It's for the teams. It's for the players. To develop. This is why we get sloppy football in week one and week two and week three. It's why I don't place bets on games in the first three weeks. It's why I don't give out picks to people because it's like throwing darts at a dartboard. I might as well just be guessing. Because you don't know who these teams are going to be in week one, week two, and week three. You need data. You need some kind of yeah. uh, proof of what they're going to be. Now, all these right. teams from week one, they may be completely different by week four. All of them. You never know. So I, I don't put too much stock into a week one thing, and that Green Bay Bears game is exactly why. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Rams, Panthers, man, how about Christian McCaffrey? Yep. Holy crap. That dude, that dude is freaking amazing. One of the most versatile players in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. 
He was awesome. I remember him coming out of the draft and, and watching him at the Combine. I was like, my God, I wish the Patriots were picking in the top ten. It was just I, – yeah. I, I wanted him, and I knew they were going to take him because – you have all those players, they all go out and they, they do their combine stuff and they look good and, they, and everything, but he looked different. It was, it was like, whoa, he stuck out. It was like, this guy is going to be good. And I knew he was going to be good. Now the Panthers, they, 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 can, they can be good again, basically, but yeah. Yeah. Chiefs, Jaguars, yeah, that was tough for uh, for Nick Foles getting hurt. That sucked. Yeah, that yeah that that one week, um, Jacksonville, I think thought they had a quarterback, and one week into the season, he's out for the rest of the season. Yeah, that's tough for Jaguar fans. Of course, it was a tough sled anyway because you're playing against you know the Kansas City Chiefs who were in the AFC Championship game last year, who many have pegged to win the Super Bowl this year. I know coming into it, a lot of people at Kansas City picked to win. So we'll see how that all plays itself out at the end of the season. Um, I'm pretty disappointed in, in um, Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Did you see that no-look pass he attempted to Travis Kelsey? I did see the Yeah, he threw it over his head. Yeah, I saw that. It, 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 it wasn't head. even close, man. It wasn't even close. And I was just shaking my head like, really, dude? Really? Now, all off season, he was listening to his own hype, and I thought he was ignoring it. I was even bragging about him. I made a post. Uh, I even made a, uh, a Photoshop image of a quote of his saying, saying that, yeah, I won MVP. I got all the stats, but they didn't get me the Super Bowl, so they mean nothing. And I was, I was bragging about him, saying he's got that Tom Brady mentality, and this is, this is really good. And then right. he goes and does that. Now, I saw in the offseason that he did a, a feature with Brett Favre where they practiced no-look passes. I saw that, too. I and saw that, too. I was like, huh, I hope he's not getting too wrapped up into this. I hope his ego is not getting wrapped up into it. And then what does he do week one? He gets cocky and thought, oh, I can just do this. A no-look pass is only used if you're trying to get a guy open because the defense is smothering you. And mm-hmm. you need to, or 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 you're trying to get a pass to against a good cover corner who's smart, and you need to trick him somehow. It's a last resort. It's something that you do very rarely, and only if you have to. It's not there for show. And Travis right. Kelsey was so wide open. I mean, it was pathetic. There was absolutely yeah. no reason to do that. That was just pure yeah. arrogance. And I was just so disappointed in him because I'm I really like him, but that that was that was pretty pathetic actually and then miles jack from the jaguars do you see they were trying to take him off the field he started throwing a temper tantrum like a child you know when you see a little kid in in the aisle of the toy store right. and throwing fits and kicking yes. and screaming and you try to take right. him out of the store and he 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 like goes limp you yeah. have to drag him miles jack was doing that dude. he was actually doing that it, it was so embarrassing and he got kicked out, of course, but that was just a weird game. Uh, I don't know about the Jaguars, but uh, boy, that that Minshew guy who came in for Foles, he he looked pretty good. Yeah, he's he 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 was a good college quarterback at Washington State. He was the talk of the town um, for a while there when he got drafted. I mean, they were all like, "Oh, you know, now Nick Foles is hurt. What are we going to do?" He's not really that bad of a quarterback. If given the chance, I mean, and you still have Leonard Fournette in the backfield, if he can get his head, you know, in the game, they can have a decent offense. I mean, they have a good defense. Miles, if Miles Jack acts like an adult, you know, you, you have, they have a good defense in Jacksonville. So, you know, if they can get corrected on offense, they should be a halfway decent team. Are they going to win the AFC South? No, I think that's going to come down to Tennessee and Houston. When it's all said and done, now that Andrew Luck has walked away in Indianapolis, I don't know what your take is on that, but I mean that was a shocker, I think, to all of us when he retired. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe that. I even I did a a one hour live show the first time I ever went live, just because of the news. I I think it's a. Sh- 